Hey, this is Nicole Schwartz with the Diana Initiative, and we're continuing our So You've Never Been to Hacker Summer Camp, What Actually Happens There? And we've got the RF Village. So Wasabi, tell me about yourself. Hello, uh, I am Wasabi. Uh, I've been participating for several, year now, several years now specifically with DEF CON, and I've been over 10 years with the cyber conferences in general. Uh, started out participating in the RFCTF, uh, went from contestant to intern to full member to quasi second in charge. Uh, and uh, here I am. And zero. My, that's a familiar story. Uh, mine started about 17 years ago. Uh, I showed up at the wire uh, Wi Fi village at DEF CON 15. I said, Oh, wow, this is cool. I'm never leaving. And I haven't. So now I am uh, ostensibly in charge. Uh, I do that because no one else wants to. And Wasabi foolishly volunteered to help. So uh, yeah, that's that's how he <laughs> became second. Anyone who wants to work gets to work. That is a common theme for all the villages. So if you really are excited by a village volunteer and you may find a new family permanently uh, or you get chained to a chair, you know, whatever. <laughs> so Wireless Village, RF Village, what exactly is that? If I'm walking into it, please explain what I'm going to see and what's going on. Yeah, without going through the entire history, um, Wi-Fi Village is where we started. It's the same village. We only did Wi-Fi stuff, and we all loved Wi-Fi stuff. But as the years went by, we started doing more and more. Software-defined radios became cheaper and more accessible, and we started doing a bunch of that. We all got our ham licenses, started doing all that stuff. And so we changed our name to Wireless Village, to try to show that we had matured past just Wi-Fi. And um, nobody took that hint at all. So they're like, oh yeah, wireless, you're you're the Wi-Fi village, got it. And so we're like, mm, all right, fine, we're the RF village now. So we are the radio frequency village, purely to denote that we like to do more than just Wi-Fi. And so if it is invisible and a means of communications, we're probably super excited about it. All right, so you've got the whole gamut. You've got some Bluetooth and other things that we can't see. Well, all right, what am I doing with it? Do you have a contest? Do you have some kind of like challenges or you're just teaching about stuff? Do you have talks like? So the main crux of what the village does is provide a series of talks. The talks are anywhere from absolute newbie level to wow, I didn't realize that was technically possible expert level. We accept speakers of all types uh, uh, across that whole skill set. If it's your first talk and you've got something that sounds fun, we will totally let you give it. If it is a talk that 15 people in the audience will understand and the rest of the crew won't, if it's exciting enough for us, we'll also accept it. And that's really, um, we're here because we're big nerds and we wanna share our, our passion with other big nerds. Uh, in addition to the talks, we also have a Capture the Flag. So we've got an official DEF CON contest called the RF Capture the Flag, uh, funnily enough. Shocking in, name. How did know, you come right? up with that? <laughs> uh, well, they're my initials, actually. Uh, no. Uh, so what we did for our contest is we've got a series of Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, software-defined radio type challenges that range in difficulty from again absolute newbie this is my first time i want to crack wpa to wow i didn't realize that was possible uh, one of the challenges is talking to the international space station and getting it to relay a message uh, that one's not actually that hard it's just one of those things that's super fun right so we like to encourage folks to get out and try new things uh, fox hunting is a big part of it where you go look for mobile transmitters and things like that but it, it's a it's a very friendly contest that is open to everybody. And our general rule is the higher you are on the scoreboard, the meaner we are to you. So if you're coming in and you're fresh and you're new and you're excited about this, we're here to teach you and help you. And if you're number two on the scoreboard, we are here to relentlessly tease you. Yeah, so, so we are providing real world scenarios in such a way that you are allowed to learn through us and not have to do anything nefarious or questionable in order to learn because not all of these things are just immediately available to anyone and everyone so speaking of availability it sounds like you kind of maybe have to come with some 
equipment uh, to participate in this? Like if somebody says, hey, this is interesting, what should they bring with them? And should they prepare it in any way, like download anything? Oh, 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 I'll have to, I'll have to say it. Wasabi's laughing too hard. You should definitely download Pentu first. That is that is definitely the first thing you should do. Unbiased opinion that Pentu is the best <laughs> Linux distro out there. Um, secondarily, the answer is everything and nothing. So we realize that folks don't always have a ton of money. So most of the challenges don't require expensive equipment. A uh, cheap Wi-Fi card, a cheap Bluetooth device, a cheap software-defined radio. I'm talking like $120 for all of those things and whatever computer you've got booting Linux live. And you've got a fair chance at doing most stuff that's physically in the room. However, during DEF CON um, offline mode or wh whatever they, we called it a few years ago when there was COVID and no one was allowed to get together, uh, we actually created what we refer to as the home game. Uh, so we made a virtual environment for Wi-Fi and for all of the software defined radio challenges that we could. And so you can actually play 60% to 70% of the contest with a web browser and nothing else. Internet connection, obviously required as well, but we give you an Amazon virtual machine that has all the software loaded in it, has a bunch of magical Wi-Fi in there, and then you can use our virtual machines to go against the software-defined radio challenges that we've got as well. So if you've got cool toys, bring them, show us. We love cool toys. If you wanna do fox hunting, you're gonna need at least like an Android cell phone, but some folks bring really complex stuff. But if it's your first time and you don't have anything and you don't have money for anything and you bring some cheap Walmart computer that has internet, we can get you going and you can actually learn stuff. Yeah, there's also a few, uh, I'm dyslexic. So is it ZQM or ZMQ? ZMQ. So the, the way the software defined radio challenges work is it's actually on like a server. And instead of getting IQ data from a radio, a software defined radio, you're just getting it from the internet. So the, the tools all treat it the same way. You just say, I'm getting my data from here and now I have to do something with it. So you, you've got a full set of pretend software defined radios and a full set of pretend Wi-Fi radios to play with to play all the challenges. Awesome. So it sounds like if I've got kids who are interested in this or new people and they've got a cheap laptop with Wi-Fi, they can participate. If they happen to have other stuff, they can bring that along and maybe participate in some fox hunts or other more advanced stuff. Absolutely that. Um, especially the kids tend to love the fox hunting because they get to run around with a phone and it's super fun. And they're just able to let go in a way that most of the adults can't. Like it's so exciting to be running around chasing a transmitter with a phone and the the look on these kids' faces when they find something always makes us like just love it. Um, we'll also run the energy out of them. Yeah, absolutely. And the parents love it because the kids get a little more tired. Um, that said, uh, to be super clear, we welcome absolutely everybody of any skill level and any age that can behave themselves. And um, <laughs> you're welcome to leave your slightly older kids with us and we're going to teach them how to hack stuff. And that's fine as long as they're behaving and following the rules and all that good stuff. We do not have anything specifically targeted for kids. It's not something that we have focused on but there's live stuff that you get to hack. And if that is what your kid wants to do and they're there to learn, we are absolutely there to teach them. We've, we've seen children of multiple ages uh, participate, whether absolutely. it's just the boxes or a little bit older and brought up maybe a little bit of gear from their parents and they sat at a table and they were able to perform just, I mean, of course they didn't solve everything, but neither do the adults. So it's a relatively even playing field. If anybody wants to feel better, I never solve more than like one or two, maybe because I get distracted, but you're going to do better than me. Hey, That's my like first time I solved zero. All right. So <laughs> yeah, the, the challenges are intentionally too much. So no one has cleared the scoreboard for the last seven or eight years, I believe. The goal is that we have more than you can possibly do so that whatever interests you is available. I want you to say, oh my gosh, you have restaurant pagers? I've always wanted to tell myself that my burger is ready. And then you can learn how that system works. Like the more we can have that's available so that folks can just learn and fall in love with this is really why we do it. Or Taylor Swift bracelets. 
absolutely that. But this one's probably a dangerous question. But if they're like, this sounds really cool, and I want to like find out the right terminology so I can figure out what I should bring with me, is there a Discord or a website or a book or something that you would say, hey, probably start here and read this or participate here a little bit first just to learn some terminology and like be a little more prepared if that's something they want to do? Absolutely. Absolutely. So we have a very friendly and vibrant community. Uh, our main website is rfhackers.com. It has a link to a community page, which provides our Discord and our GitHub and a couple of social media accounts and those kinds of things. The most active place is solidly the Discord. We are very friendly, very welcoming. Until you say that you're trying to clone a car key, you are there and you're there to have fun. And we're all learning stuff together. And everything from this is how cellular really works to I've never plugged in an SDR. Is this the right way or is it upside down? Uh, we, we've got everything and folks are super friendly. So come in and learn and hang out. Definitely a great place. And we've got a couple of resources where we've linked out to like our YouTube channel and uh, also our wiki, which it, while it is my love, it is definitely a work in progress that we are trying to expand upon and make better. And it's a part of our GitHub where there is released code that we provide to people. So if anyone wants to volunteer, it sounds like that's an opportunity. No, absolutely. I mean, anything from a small write-up of uh, this is how I figured out how to do something with WEP to I found this cool signal or, hey, here's an interesting way that I have found to uh, pull down this particular signal to do this particular thing. It's it's all welcome. I mean, it's, it's a place to share and uh, uh, contribute. Awesome. So... You're at DEF CON, you have the contest, you have the village. Do you show up anywhere else during the course of a year? Oh my, everywhere. So as Wasabi said, first, definitely GitHub. Uh, we have a lot of content out there, including full sources for all of the Wi-Fi stuff and all of the physical SDR stuff. We're still working on releasing the, the virtual SDR stuff, but you can more or less play our own game at your house uh, with, with just the code that we've released. I'm working on releasing the brand new Fox code that we used at DEF CON uh, in the next week or two. I just got my hardware back from, from shipping, so didn't have a way to test it. Uh, but if you actually want to see us somewhere, in addition to our Discord, where you can find us all the time, uh, we do go to quite a number of conferences every year. COVID did sort of cancel a few of them, unfortunately, and they simply never recovered. Uh, ShmooCon is a great example of a place that we're definitely going to be this year, but then it's not going to be there anymore. And we're all going to cry very hard about that. Um, but on the bright side, B-Sides Delaware is just starting up again after COVID. Uh, we also do B-Sides Charm and something else. B-Sides right? DC, if they come back. <laughs> B-Sides DC. If they recover. I mean, it's... A lot of us are uh, locked to the East Coast, so predominantly we're a lot of East Coast. Uh, we are some places virtually throughout the year as well. We have been invited and asked to be at like a, a, a couple of Texas ones or a few other ones where we were able to set up our virtual game because it is not always possible to get a number of our team to fly somewhere that's not DEF CON. So. Yeah, if you're interested in having us at your conference, we are interested in doing that. East Coast conferences are just easier for the team because that's where we're all located. But if you want to have our virtual game available, that is something we can do. We can just turn it on and we can support your folks remotely. And we have done that for quite a few conferences through COVID and even a couple afterwards. So no, we can't fly out to your 300 person conference in the middle of Kansas, but it doesn't cost us basically anything to turn the game on and let a couple of people play for fun. So we're pretty much always happy to do that if there isn't a conflict or a major conference that we're prepping for or something else that eats our time. Awesome. So I think the last thing really to ask you is if the person listening to this is new and they're going to come to DEF CON for the first time, what is your pitch for why they should come spend the majority of their time hanging out with y'all? If you are new and you are going to DEF CON for the first time, don't. 
don't come to our village and spend your entire weekend there. <laughs> don't do it. Come in, see what we're about. See if it's the thing that really scratches your itch. And if it's not, go check out Lockpick Village. Go check out Biohacking Village. Go check out Car Hacking Village. If the part of hacking the cars that you're most interested in is hacking the car keys, maybe stay where we are. If you want to clip onto the OBD2 port, maybe go over there. But DEF CON's got 30 plus villages. They've got 77 plus contests. Go check My it out. My spreadsheet is in the hundred lines of interviews that I'm attempting yeah. to do. There is yeah. a lot going on. Go, go check out what's there. And if you find that what we do is your thing, come back, hang out with us. That's great. That's all we're looking for is the people who want to spend their entire weekend sitting with us. And those people exist. And, and they fill the village. And, and they sit there and they bring just as much gear as we do. And they have as many people as we do. And it's almost like there's six teams of us sitting at each table. Yep. But, I mean, the environment within the village is actually fairly friendly where somebody who's really new, who was just like, I have no idea what I'm doing, has tapped someone on the shoulder. And people have been very helpful. It was even the same when I was a contestant. Like somebody let somebody borrow an antenna. Somebody, uh, my Raspberry Pi just went on the fritz. Can you help me with my SD card? Like it's it's a it's a very welcoming environment. It's not like oh you're new. Uh, like it's it's like okay cool. What, what's going on? Is it is it not doing this? Oh, uh, you've got a porta pack on. You should probably check and see if you're in hack RF mode so that you can actually use your your radio. You know it's 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 it. it it's very welcoming. I mean, if somebody's like really deep in the trenches and really working on something, they may not be immediately available to help you, but there's a bunch of people at all the tables and I've seen everybody be very helpful. Absolutely. We're just trying to find the people who really love this. And when you do, when somebody asks you about it, you want to share. And that, that's the kind of place we like having. Awesome. Well, thank you both so much. And everybody can check the show notes for I'm going to have a link to the website. And from the website, it sounds like you can get to the GitHub and the YouTube and all the other resources. Absolutely. <laughs> thank you.